All right, so chart 13, let's try it together. F U L and beautiful. A R E says air, 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 air. T A I N says time, 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 and mountain. U R E says your, 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 your. T U R E says church, 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 and pastor. W A R says war 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 in in missionary S I O N O R says er 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 in sailor. A R says er 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 in dollar. Y says it 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 in crystal. E R R says air 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 in I want to see all right, so we're not doing any sounds off of chart 13 on today. We're actually going to learn something new. So if you remember, we've been learning like the different types of words. We learn compound words is when we have two small words that we put together to turn into one big word. We learn homonyms when we have two words that sound just the same. But when you write it and when you write, put it in a sentence, use it in a sentence, they are have different meanings. So today we're going to learn about what's called contractions. Let me write that up here. Contractions. We're going to learn about contractions. Oops. That's great. Whenever you erase it. Contractions. Okay. So a contraction is when we have two words that we put together to shorten it, to make it into a smaller word. You'll have two separate words. Then when you join those two words together, you will shorten it to make a new word. So whenever we shorten the word, what we do is we take out some of the letters and we replace those letters that we took out with what's called an apostrophe. Apostrophe. Okay. So this is what an apostrophe looks like. So let me show you, for example, the word not. Not is often a word that you contract. Whenever you contract not, meaning you put it together with another word, you will take out the O and you put the apostrophe in place of that O. You see how I did that? So now it's N-T, but it still will say not. It's just you took out the O. So whenever you contract, you have two small words. You'll take those two small words, you put it together to make it shorter. Like I said, when you write it, you're usually taking out a letter and you'll replace the letter you took out with an apostrophe to show that you took out a letter. So for example, could not. When I contract could not, it becomes couldn't. See that? Could not becomes couldn't. Okay, next we have should not. If I contract should and not, I put it together, what will it become? Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Can not. Can and not. When I contract it and put it together, it becomes can. Do y'all see what, I, what it is now? You see, we use these words and they're called contractions. Next, we have did not. When I contract and put did not together, it becomes it didn't. didn't. It. Now, will not is a little tricky. 
If I have will and not, and I put it together to contract it, <coughs> what would you say? You would probably say willant, but it's not willant. It is actually won't. So will and not together turns into won't. So this is just one of those that's a little tricky. I don't know why it's Oops. won't, but yeah. Okay. So whenever you're contracting again, guys, you take out the letter, which we took out the O and we put the apostrophe and you see how we put it all together. We contracted them. Let's look at another one. So we have will. Will is often another word we contract. When we contract will, we take out the W-I and we usually only put apostrophe L-L. We take out W-I to have L-L. So if I say she will, guess what it becomes? She'll. She'll. She will becomes she'll. Next, he will. It becomes he'll. he'll. Apostrophe L-L. We took out the W-I. Next, you will becomes you will. We will. 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 And they will becomes they'll. They'll. That's how you contract. You take out the certain letter. You take out certain letters to put an apostrophe and the rest of the other letters that you kept. Next, have, have, we're taking out the H-A and we put apostrophe V-E. So we have, if I contract it, do you know? We've. we've. You have, if I contract it, it becomes? You. Somebody else in second grade is coming by me. You've. Okay, so we have we, you have you. So we have others we'll learn, but these are examples of a few of them. So a contraction is when you have two words that you join together to make one word and you shorten it by taking out some of the letters. Those letters that you took out, you put an apostrophe in place of those letters you take out. All right. Okay, good. So that's contractions. That's our phonics lesson on today. Your phonics test is on tomorrow. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go over our science and social studies this week. Let's start with social studies, page 72. I'm going to get all of my stuff. Carson, you can pack up your stuff you're checking out. You need your science, social studies, and reading tonight. Wait, where is my mouse? All right, page 72. All right, so we vis we're visiting our next country, which is in North America, the continent of North America. Uh, this country is Mexico. Last week, we went to the country that was to the north of us, which was Canada. And this week, we're visiting the country to the south of us, which is Mexico, which is in North America. So in Mexico, the people from Spain settled in Mexico, and that's why they're called the Spanish. I mean, that's why they speak Spanish. And since, I don't think I need it today. Check on Wednesday. I don't think I put math today. It says it? I think Check, it's a double check. Okay, so yes, yeah, so the people speak Spanish. That is their language that they speak in Mexico, and the people from Mexico are called Mexican. Mexico, Mexican. That's the same thing. So the people from Mexico are called Mexicans because they're from Mexico. So in Mexico, 
The largest city in Mexico is called Mexico City. It is the largest city in the continent of North America as well. So Mexico City is not only the largest city in Mexico, but it is also the largest city in North America. That's how huge, how large the city is. And so the city looks a lot like our cities here in America. As you can see, there's, you know, the buildings and different things like that. So this is Mexico. So we also talked about how in Mexico, um, there they there it's very hot in Mexico. Usually hot most of the year. It's it's very warm. So because it's so hot and because there's so much sun in Mexico, there are certain clothing that they wear, like a sombrero, for example. A sombrero is this really large hat that they'll wear to keep them shaded from the sun. They wear a poncho, which is. Uh, it's open, you know, if the wind is blowing, you can, the wind can get through, you know, it's, it's, um, it keeps them cool. They wear a lot of clothing that keeps them cool and they do wear regular clothing too, but yeah. that's just some of their native clothing that they will wear. The afternoon is their nap time. They call it siesta. That's their nap time. And a lot of the shops will close so that they can eat lunch and, um, and yeah. Okay, so I also told you guys that there were three foods that were founded in Mexico, avocados, which you can make guacamole from avocados, uh, chocolate, and tomatoes. Those are three different foods that are native to Mexico, meaning it was founded in Mexico. And I say chocolate, but really I mean the cocoa bean, that's what chocolate is made from. Uh, cocoa beans, okay? Piñatas are a popular thing. We, you know, we usually know them for know be, know about them because they're used for birthday parties but piñatas are also used and it's a mexican tradition they use yeah you good they use it for our birthday to celebrate birthday parties and also they use it um for christmas festivities as well she yeah she out there you can just walk and go so also um the children like to play with the iguanas in Mexico. There's a lot of iguanas that run freely, and a lot of the children play with some of the iguanas. So that's Mexico. The people speak Spanish. They are called the Mexican people because they're from Mexico. Okay. All right. So that's our social studies on Mexico and what we will be testing on this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our science, talking about the part of a plant, the flower in particular, part of the plant. Ninety-eight, page ninety-eight in science. Oh, I put all the way to a Yes. What? All right, so after we introduced plants and we discussed how important they were, on page 98, we started to talk about the different parts of a plant. This week, we're focusing on the flower. So all plants, they look different. They are different. Some plants look alike, but all plants will have four parts to it. They will have the roots, the stem, the leaf, and the flower. Those are the four parts of a plant, the roots, stems, leaves, flowers. I'm not looking at that right now, I just took it. The root, stem, leaves, and flower. Those are the four parts. Some plants will not have a flower. They will have what it's instead called a cone, like a pine tree, for example. Pine trees, instead of a flower, they have pine cones, okay? So the flower's job is to make seeds for the plant. Now we know a plant grows from a seed. So the flower has a really important job and that is making seeds so that other seeds can be planted and make that same kind of plant. In order for the seed to grow, it will need sunlight, water, and good soil in order to grow. If it's missing any one of those things, it will be 
impossible for the plant to grow. So all four parts of the plant are important and the flower's job, that's what we're focusing on this week, is to make seeds. So let's look at 99, I mean 100, and let's discuss some of the flowers and seeds that we eat. So again, it's a flower's job to make the seeds for the plant. We actually eat some of the flowers that bloom from plants and we call them fruits, like apples, oranges, lemons, pears, for example, all of these are the, are, all of those are fruit, we call them fruits, but they're actually the flower part of the plant because that's the part that grows, that's the part that blossoms, I guess you could say, the fruit. So those is only certain trees, not all trees, but certain plants, they have fruits that come from it and the fruit is the flower. There are some plants where you can eat the seeds, like walnuts, almonds, white beans, red beans, any type of bean actually, peanuts, corn, sunflower seeds, all of these are the act are actually seeds of a plant and they you can eat those seeds. So the flower's job is to make seeds and some of those seeds and some of those flowers, we actually eat them, like I said, and the flower that we eat is called fruits, are called fruits, and the seeds, it's only certain seeds, not all seeds of a plant, but certain seeds of plants like beans, nuts, we can actually eat those, okay? So plants make seeds so that new plants can grow. There are many kinds of apples, but an apple seed will always grow into an apple tree. So God, when he made the plants, he said that all the plants will be after their own kind. You cannot plant an apple seed and get an orange. You cannot plant a banana seed and get a lemon. It's no way possible for that to happen. And that is because inside of each seed, God made them all after their own kind. So if it's an apple seed you plant, you will get an apple tree from that apple seed. And God planned it to go that way and it stays that way. You can't hope, oh, let me plant this orange seed and then hope it grows into something different. No, it's gonna be an orange, okay? All right, so that's our lesson on plants this week in science, how plants grow and their importance. All right, that's it for science and social studies, guys. Your test is on Friday, so make sure to review. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our reading. Balto, we'll finish our book on today. Yay! All right, so we are on page 41. So if you remember, Balto and Gunner, they finally started their part of the race. It was difficult, right? But Balto let them. Remember one time they were walking and Balto realized they were on ice and he stopped because if they would have kept going, the ice would have cracked. At one point, the medicine fell off of the sled, but Gunner was able to find it. Then when they finally arrived to the last stop, they weren't even ready. So Gunner kept going. And so that's where we'll pick up today on page 41, talking about what happens after Gunner decided that they were going to continue on in the race, page 42, not 41, sorry. That's it, that's it. Okay, page 42. I think it's supposed to be 42. I think he's supposed to be 42. Me or Asa? Asa. All right, Asa, you there? I don't know. See you okay, can you read page 42? It was just before dawn. The sky began to glow. In the town of Nome, everyone was sleeping. Okay, so they find it. So they they get the they take the medicine all the way to Nome. When they get there, it was very quiet. But that's because they got there like when everyone was asleep. Okay, Micah forty three. They're gonna arrive. Gunner, Gunner, and and his team pulled into town. They had made it. Balto was too tired to bark. 
they had been on the trail for 20 hours straight. They had driven 53 miles. Wait, wait, wait. 53 miles and one. Oh my. Oh my gosh. And wait, how much? Okay, so Gunner and the team finally made it back into town. They were tired, though. They have been going for 20 hours. It's almost a full day they were. They have been going. They drove 53 miles. That's really long. Okay, 44, Braley. They arrived. The doctor was surprised. The doctor was surprised. He thought it would take 15 days to get the medicine, but better delivered. After only five and a half days, thank you, Bernard said to the doctor, you are a hero. Bato is the hero, said Gunner. I could have done it without him. Okay, so as soon as they arrived, they took the medicine to the doctor, and it was supposed to initially take 15 days, but Gunner got it there in five and a half days. And so they were shocked. They kept going, they worked hard, and they made it. And so this is good, though, because the children really needed the medicine. Okay, turn the page. Where's the book? Hmm? Did you take it home? Cairo? We're not, we're not on that. The doctor went right to work. He gave the medicine to all the sick people in a few days. They would be well. The title of no was saved. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. Aww. So the doctor immediately, of course, went to work, gave the children the medicine, and he said it would take a few days and they would finally be better. 47, Asa. All over America, people cheered for Balto. They read about his bravery in the newspaper. Balto was the most famous dog in the world. So all over America, because of what had been done, everyone all over heard about it. They actually wrote about Balto's story in the newspaper and he became famous. They called him brave because of him, you know, leading the team through that rough storm to get the medicine and because of how fast they did it. 48, Micah. Oh my God. We're almost, this was, that's the last page. A year later, the people of New York City put up a statue of Bolto. It still stands in Central Park. Lots of children play in the statue to remember. Oh, I'm so sorry. The bravest dog. So a year later, the people of New York City decided to build a statue of Balto in Central Park. It's a famous park in New York City. 
and they built a statue of Balto, and it was to, you know, um, make a like a remembrance, a memorial of what Balto had done. So I'll actually show you guys. I actually saw the statue. What? Yeah. Wait, wait, you didn't mind. I don't know what the park. I guess we don't uh pictures. Yeah, so this is the actual picture of the statue. So yeah. Oh, oh that's 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 you did it. Mm -hmm. Wait, did he die? Yeah, about to yeah, he's that was a long time ago. Oh. So yeah, so yeah, in New York City there's actually the actual statue you see on the bottom. You it says Balto. See that? It says Balto. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was a few years ago. So yeah, Balto. So it's a real statue. If you ever go to New York, you can go and visit the Balto statue in Central Park. All right. So good, guys. So you can put your reading away. I'll take them. So this is Balto. So we'll start our next book, Aesop's Fables, next week. That's our last book we'll be reading for the year. Aesop's. Fables, mm -hmm. fables. Oh, fables. Stop. Stop. Oh. All right, let's go ahead and review our language and then we'll be done. Yeah. Come on, David, give it here. All right, let's go ahead and go over our language. All right, so let's review our adjectives. So remember, guys, what is an adjective? An adjective is a word that describes a noun. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. So we've been talking about nouns, and we gave adjectives for those nouns. Remember, adjectives, I mean, nouns, yeah, adjectives give you a picture of the noun. It helps you to see what it looks like. It helps you to see what the noun looks like. So today I'll give you an adjective and I want you to give me a noun that would describe, that would go with that adjective. So if I said fluffy as an adjective, what would be a noun that would go with that adjective? Bird. Bird. If I said smooth, what would be a noun that would go with the adjective smooth? Pillow. A pillow. If I would say bumpy, what would be a noun that would go with the adjective bumpy? Asa? The rock. A rock. If I would say heavy, what would be a noun to go with the adjective heavy? Oh, yeah. Oh. I know it. It's a it's a, okay. a box. A box. Okay. If I would say circular or circle, what would be a noun that would go with that adjective? There's only one for a ball. A ball. If I would say blue, what would be a noun that could go with the adjective blue? Sky. If I would say green, what would be an adjective to go with the color green? Uh a what? I said what? green. Grass. Grass. Oh. Good. If I would say sunny, what would be an adjective to go with the noun sun? To go with the adjective will be a noun to go with the adjective sunny. Sunday. Sunday. Good. So tomorrow's test, you'll have to do both of those. You'll have some adjective, I mean, some nouns. You have to give an adjective. Then I'll give you an adjective and you have to give a noun for the adjective. Okay. All right, so that covers all of our lessons on today. Ace, I'll see you tomorrow for Bible and your uh, phonics test, okay?
拜。